Doctor, I'm not surprised he soared to number one. He has struck a chord um, and hit on a note that is playing across so many broad swaths of the population. And one theme he hits on is distrust of institutions, of government, of corporations, of media. Um, and I think that's emblematic of what's going on in the country. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the reasons that he said he wrote this song was not for fame, not for glory, but he was feeling a sense of mental illness, depression, and anxiety because of the state of our economy. And so many Americans... Uh, resonate with that. That's why he shot up to number one, because he understood and acknowledged the pain, the stuff, the suffering, and the struggling that so many Americans are uh, dealing with on a daily basis. And, you know, he is a voice for all of those who aren't able to express what they're feeling, what they're going through, and be able to say, we need change. Yeah, Kennedy, it reminds me so much of 2016, um, the same sentiment. Uh, in the wake of the 2016 election, I flew out to Indiana and I got to interview some carrier workers. And you'll remember the carrier workers who lost their jobs. A man in a corporate suit stood up and he said to them, the best way to stay competitive and protect the business for the long term is to move production from India and Indianapolis to Mexico. And the video went viral. You just see the absolute horror on the faces of these employees. And amazingly, one of the only Republicans to ever mention it was Donald Trump, specifically the carrier workers. And on the Democrat side, it wasn't Hillary Clinton talking about the carrier workers. It was Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Both hitting the same note. And I think that sentiment is alive and well today. And it, it, it's very much alive and well in some of these respondents to the polls we were talking about earlier. You know, he, he worked these jobs. He worked for very little money and worked so hard and just felt beaten into the ground. And it's what uh, Donald Trump touched upon when he talked about the forgotten man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Calvin Coolidge talked about that as well. But it's, it's the people who struggle who not only are not being heard, they're not being helped. Uh, they've got a boot on their neck. They're paying too much in taxes and they're only going to pay more and they get none of those benefits. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like taxation is theft and what do you have to show for it in the end? Luckily for him, his spiral has been turned into art that is so authentic and people really, really identify with what he's saying because he's lived it. Yeah, it also reminds me of Hillbilly Elegy, that book that just blew it out of the water by J.D. Vance, who yep. went on to be a United States senator. Um, what? So he lives right down the road from my daddy where I was born and raised. And so this touches me probably in a way that it, it doesn't other people. Um, and what connects with folks for me it's not the lyrics, but it's the actual music. A man playing a resonator guitar, it can also be played like a slide or a dobro. Um, and I was critical, like that Jason Aldean song, hated it. Not the lyrics, but the music, because it's manufactured corporate pop. And you can grab the necks of your Florida Georgia Line t-shirts <laughs> and sweat all day and moan about what I just said. But when he says living in the new world with an old soul, the truth of those words are that music that he's playing is the music born on front porches and born in churches up in the mountains and up in hollers. And it's not made by some big machine down in Nashville being shoved down people's throats. So go listen to Doc Watson and go listen to Bill Monroe and go listen to Ricky Skaggs and you will know why this man is connecting with you. That's yeah. the Monroe doctrine right there. <laughs> that, that it is. Jeremy, um, I, that was so well said, Dagan, yeah. but according to the media, this is a viral right-wing anthem. It's offensive, it's fat phobic, it's controversial, it's championed by the right, it's obscure, uh, he punches down, I go on and on, but I mean, how out of touch can you be? Uh, to I mean, totally out of touch. I mean, honestly, they should be, a lot of these kind of progressive uh, politicians should be paying attention, trying to understand what's going on in this cultural moment. Why are people so upset and just willing to listen and, and, and to see w what made this hit go viral? It's that so many people could relate to it. I mean, there have now been several remixes done. I don't know if you've seen these, of, of several different people from different walks of life. There's been like a, a few black guys with like a, a rap remix on it. I mean, in agreement saying, look, this is, this is our reality. Yeah. And when you have people coming together, uh, multiracial working class coalition people coming together, that it, any anyone who's worth their salt in politics will say you we need to be listening and saying look we uh, we need a government and po political leaders that respond to that and respond to the cultural moment yep because yeah. politics is about the people after all that's what it's that's all exactly about exactly right
Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.